the Grim. Season two of Grimm has turned into this monster big machine that has flames coming out of the back engine and it just like won't quit. It's bigger, better, badder. There's this crazy mythical family tree of Vesson. We've incorporated fairy tales from all over the world, from various cultures, various languages. There's a prince. Where? Here, in Port. I think what much of the fan base really enjoys is that mythology that's kind of getting deeper and deeper and we're discovering more as Nick discovers more. You. Season one was kind of the micro image of the child molester and the big bad wolf of these individual creatures that had very specific uh, arcs to them. It was sort of about Nick dealing with the fact that he was a Grim, that he was descended of this line. A Grim is someone who can see into the heart of darkness. Grims were the first profilers, but we always wanted to expand beyond the Grims and that anyone who told fairy tales was doing the same thing the Grims were doing. We look for fairy tales from all over the world, but there doesn't have to be a specific fairy tale each time, there just has to be a specific critter and usually there's some myth associated with that i think it's a zegavolk the hell is he talking about a zegavolk eats toads which gives them a, a kind of psycho hallucinogenic influence over people season two is much more intricate than season one uh, we've moved away from strictly procedural show to a show that is very rich in mythology we've gotten into kind of the shifting power dynamics in the last 100 200 years and they're trying to tell that story in the Vesson world. Our showrunners spent a lot more time digging into just how evil the seven royal families are. The guy who hired me is working for somebody else. Well, who the hell is that? We don't know. It could be a royal. Like, I heard there might be one in Portland. The seven royal families resurfaced recently because they found, well, different machinations and different ways to sort of raise their powers and, and, and influence once again. Supposedly, Crusaders in the 13th century sacked Constantinople. And they found something that they considered too powerful to return to the royal families who helped finance their crusade. If what they found ever fell into the hands of the royals, the royals would have way too much power. And that was not a good thing. So they decided to hide what they found. They must have sacked something pretty significant. Any idea what? Nobody seems to know. But a lot of people want to find out, and they're willing to kill for it. OK. So who has the other six keys? I don't know for sure. The seven keys are all actually uh, pieces of a map. If you place them up against paper with ink, you will see the exact location you have whatever it was that was buried all those centuries ago. It could be Muhammad's sword. It could be uh, pieces of the cross and nails of the Holy Cross. It all depends on which legend you believe. In one, it's the secret of alchemy and another everlasting life. Whatever my ancestors found, they knew that if the royals got their hands on this, it would be so horribly devastating to the world that uh, they had to hide it. My guess, this map of yours was drawn in the Baha'im style, which could put it squarely in the Schwarzwald. Sorry, the Black Forest, see? David and Jim leave no stone unturned in terms of um, details to the story and honoring the origins of these stories. Jim Kauf just got back from the Black Forest, which is where the Grimm's Fairy Tales originally took place, and he kind of pulled inspiration from that. I specifically wanted to drive from Paris to Vienna because that is where a lot of our mythology takes place. I wanted to make sure you know, is Portland really like what's there? And yeah, it is. There is so much texture to the mythology. For instance, just today we were shooting that scene between Eric Renard and myself and the two brothers coming head to head and talking. And so much is revealed in that conversation. We want you back in the family, Sean. Historic things are happening. And there's an important place for you. Things that I, as the actor, didn't even realize about the character. And so I've had to incorporate that. And it's wonderful. It's, it's, it just constantly gets richer and richer. What I'm trying to say is, dear brother, it's time to come home. When we were doing the pilot, we thought it would be great to have a sort of mobile library that contains so much of this lore in it. Well, hello, TV viewing public. I'm uh, David Gentoli, Nick Burkhardt on Grimm. You would know that you have the DVD. 
Yeah, I want to show you all the mysteries, uncover some of the mysteries of Aunt Marie's trailer. I mean, all these things are so old that I'm sure it's all haunted in some horrible way. These are my favorite of all time because they work. This should be a, uh, a Monroe item, but it's not, it's in the trailer. I figure right now I'll show you in the weapons cabinet, which I've spent a lot of time, you know, as a character playing with some of these little toys here. I have no idea what most of this stuff is. I, I'm familiar with the knives, never have used any of these in the show. I've carried this thing at least. This thing's had a lot of appearances. This is actually now a uh, member of SAG-AFTRA. It's been on TV so many times. Just think of the history, man. Yeah. All the skulls bashed in, bones broken, knees shattered. Honestly, horrible weapon. So if you really got cranked with one of these things, glad I live when I do. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the history of the Grimms was a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and Nick has grown in hand-to-hand -hand combat and thinks he can do that way. And we just love having all these weird and traditional weapons. What's this, Nick? What? Elephant gun, triple barrel. Made in England, very rare. I liked the elephant gun that I used on the Ogre. That was pretty cool, because that was a real, like, three-barreled shotgun. <laughs> it was two barrels on top, and it's a rifle. So they're huge bore slugs. I mean, they're really like the size of my thumb. The reason that the Grimm's invest and still use the older weapons is they don't leave a trail, you know? And their world is much more secretive than our world. Our man Nick, who is pretty proficient with most of these weapons, also has a gun and a badge because he's a modern day detective. Can we just shoot him? We can. But I've got one of those if you want to see it. Seriously, you've got a crossbow. We mix the modern and, and the ancient. We have a lot of fun doing that. Pan up, just over the eyes. Sexiest shot in cinema. My favorite Vessen creature from season two was the porcupine man. Vulcan Alice, man. I thought he looked amazing. He's like this big, lumbering, kind of like molten thing. You know? The cachet mortel, the, the, you know, the puffer fish. What the hell? He's of Asian descent, you know. It's sort of that thing, sort of dealing with my roots and, you know, a family thing. He's a mysterious man. He got that top hat, you know, he got to run with a cane and thing, you know. Nice hat, bro. One of my favorite vests of all time is Bud the East Bieber. I am always going to be the biggest supporter of the Ice Biebers just because they're adorable. I, I just can't vogue at the drop of a hat. A man has to be in a certain state of mm, mind before he can do such a thing. And it's nice to have uh, some vests thrown in that aren't scary. And I love Danny Bruno, who plays Bud the refrigerator repairman. I don't know what effect it'll have. It could damage your whole life. Bud. I know my wife bakes a lot. <laughs> That's why, I, well, anyway, I'm a good eater and she's a good cook, so that's, it's a good, good combo. <laughs> The show's getting a great reception, both in the United States and Canada, but we're in 200 countries worldwide. People tap into these fairy tales that try to explain uh, about the human condition without actually looking at the human condition eye to eye. We were number one in Germany recently. We were number one in England recently. It's playing great all over the world, and I think it's because these stories are so basic to human nature that people respond to them. I've been surprised at how much people like my character, considering how awful she is to all of the heroes of the show, but people seem to like her breed of evil. Be a good little prince and shut the door. Our fans are amazing. We have such a hardcore base, and they'll follow us anywhere, and we love them for that. It's okay, because it's just me, right? We're just trying to be entertaining, so, you know, hopefully we're entertaining. If we're entertaining, keep tuning in.